Good morning. Thank you for joining me still on TMI Tuesday. And uh, I did say we're going to be looking at a couple of issues, uh, starting with the Undo elections that uh, took place last week, Saturday, basically the governorship race uh, where we had uh, the incumbent governor, uh, Kerudolu, uh, polling 292,830 votes to defeat his closest rival, Eitayo Jegede, that pulled 195,791 votes. And uh, looking at that, as it is uh, the electoral process, uh, various uh, issues and uh, political pundits uh, saying that this is how it's going to turn out. But most times, expectations really don't show up the way uh, they are expected. But uh, discussing this with me, uh, looking at conducting credit polls, credible polls in Nigeria uh, with a special focus on Ondo governorship race, I have with me a legal practitioner, otherwise known as a custodian of the law, and uh, he is Felix Isere. Thanks for joining me, Thank Felix. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Well, uh, on the election, October 10 has come and gone, just like we had that of Edo State, uh, which came and left. So, uh, what's your view about the electoral process in Ondo? Did it meet your expectations? Actually, uh, I may not have a first hand information, but you know, we had people who were on ground who gave us uh, feedbacks, who spoke to us on what happened. We also followed social media to know what was happening. Uh, for now, there's no, no cause for alarm. Nobody has raised any issue of, of the election was rigged. Mm. The PDP, they've not raised any issue that, oh, this uh, election was rigged. And just that they've not congratulated the, the APC in the election. In the case of Edo, when the PDP uh, won Edo, you know, they said that the APC is compulsory that they have to congratulate them. But, you know, though we also expected them to have also congratulated to show very good uh, <laughs> uh, example. So, but looking at what happened in, uh, uh, in Ondo, we can see that, okay, we, we, we tend to be moving towards a more democratic regime. When we realize some elections that have taken place before where elections were done at gunpoint, we saw, you know, you know destruction of ballot paper, we saw, you know, violent, but in an Undo election, I've actually not seen anywhere where there was violence, where people were killed, you know, where ballot paper were being uh, snatched. There's none. So for now, we can say that Undo election was free and fair, except uh, contrary is proven. Okay. By court of law. Okay. Let's look at the voters' uh, turnout. Uh, we've always been uh, on the platform that uh, encouraging voters to participate, uh, encouraging citizens to uh, participate key into elections. Uh, would you say that the voters' turnout was impressive? No, it, it, it was not impressive, considering the, 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 the total number of collected PPCs, you know, considering the number that... In any elections in Nigeria, I have realized that we cannot always be able to get a maximum of 40, 45%. We can't even get 50% of voters. So it's, it's something that to us, it's worrisome to us that, oh, despite the sensitization, despite the consciousness, the political consciousness of Nigerians, on election day, many of them they, they say, decide to stay at home. So it is unfortunate that in the Undo election, we have also seen another scenario wherein we cannot get up to 50% of total number of voters. Yeah, there was a place at Iswa town where we had uh, just, uh, <laughs> uh, we, it was like a, a kiosk. And uh, there were variably nobody there. You know, very, very uh, the electoral process wasn't really going on. Very, very and we were wondering, where are these persons? Now, if we take a, a look at that, and uh, the reasons uh, which may not be far-fetched from the fact that politicians, even after winning elections, uh, some, some of them, uh, they, they end up not fulfilling the promises that they earmarked in their manifestos. Do you think that also go a long way to cause voter apathy? Uh, for me, you know, in those states, I cannot totally say that the governor is not performing. That's why most people didn't come out. I don't think so. You know, if the governor is not performing, one would have expected them to come out in mass to vote against him. So since that was not so done, we cannot say because of the performance of the governor. That is why uh, people didn't turn up. I just think that Nigerians we still have this lackadaisical attitude towards the electoral process. We feel that it is not our concern. Many of them don't still have trust in the electoral process. So on election day, they don't want to waste their time. They prefer to stay at home because of the lack of trust. Not until we have built that confidence in the minds of the electorate, we cannot be able to have you know, a very high participation 
in uh, in electoral press. But again, in, in looking at on those states, some of us had our reservation. We had our fears. We thought that oh, APC was going to lose uh, on those states. Looking at the history of everything that had the incidents that happened that led to the defection of the deputy governor, you know, the resignation of the SSG, you know, people leaving the party, leaving the, the government. We thought that oh, but thank God that there was a man who had who was a leader in the southwest, you know, as to why Tinubu, who was able to go in tow on those states to ensure that he he settled the dispute then to reconcile the warring factions then at the end they all came together to work. That is to show that APC as a party, if they are able to put their hearts in order, if they are able to work together as one, they are always guarantee of victory. Okay, what did you think played out in the electoral process? Was it uh, as a result of an external factor? I, I do not, I do not think because so. Because you but, may mention of uh, I, do not, I, do, I, do, I do not think so, but all I can say is that we can draw a dichotomy between a due election and a due election. Okay. You know, if, if a due election had gotten the support that Ondo got, they got, we, we would have also, APC would have also won the election. We realized that in Ondo, you know, both those the party members in the presidency, the party members in others, the governors, many of them, they rally around the, 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 the party, you know, those, they not, and in, in, in those states, we fought a good fight. We worked on our board. Okay, okay, let's look at the ownership of uh, uh, the electoral process. Now, it's expected that in any given polity, uh, when there is an election, uh, the people basically, they determine who uh, takes the number one seat or the public office. Now, uh, what played out there, does it mean the uh, expectations that the people took ownership of the election? It's not a case of people taking ownership of, of in any election, there are always indices of victory. There are always indices of winning. Sometimes, most times, you realize that the critical stakeholders influence where the people go to. If, for example, now the deputy governor who, that decamped and went to PDP, when he didn't get the ticket, he went to ZLP. If he had remained in PDP and joined forces with the, the PDP candidates, maybe it's, it would have been a shocker. <laughs> that would have been so a, it's, a it's, big it's one all, to pull. Yes, it's all about stakeholdership. Okay. You also realize that the three candidates from the, uh, the PDP, APC, and ZLP, they were from the different central districts. So, if, for example, they had given maybe the deputy governor had gotten the tickets and maybe Jagade had become uh, a deputy uh, candidate or reversed the case. Maybe they would have been able to play, but if you look at that, the fact that he was able to split the vote of PDP, and that gave APC the very big uh, opportunity to get victory. Okay, uh, let's look at the uh, political parties. Now, we have about 17 political parties on the ballot in Ondo State, and we now have a situation where, even though there are several parties on the ballot, uh, we begin to see like two horse race, uh, three horse race, like in the door, which are two yeah. horse race, kind of impression because of the PDP and the APC that dominated uh, the uh, uh, electoral process. In Ondo State, we had the APC, the PDP, and the ZLP. Now, a lot of persons are saying, political pundits are saying that it seems the multi-party system that we operate in Nigeria isn't feasible. Would you for me, concur? For me, I have, I have had an advocate of a two-party state. When you have a two-party state, you tend to have a very vibrant opposition. Really? But when you have a multi-party state, what you are going to see a bunch of, many of them, 90% are a bunch of jokers, you know, a bunch of opportunists who are waiting to be given money to step down, who are waiting to work, give money to work against their party. But when you have a vibrant opposition that is very, very strong, you realize that we are, we are building democracy, we are building a vibrant opposition that will be able to not just aggregate, but also to, to project the interest of the people. So in Nigeria today, the two-party system, it's what we need to have a vibrant opposition, not the okay. multi-party system. Thank God to Ireland that they were able to at least you know, deregister many of these parties. Where you go to ballot paper, you see 50 person contesting. And out of those 50 of them, some of them cannot even win their own, their own uh, polling units. So it's unfortunate that it, it, it also reduced the cost of election. If you are only printing for only two candidates, to the candidate, it's better than having so much uh, uh, candidate in the ballot at the end, only two of them are actually serious or so. Okay, uh, let's look at the uh, security personnel uh, deployed to on those states. Uh, some are saying that in an electoral process, in a democratic setting as this, uh, we shouldn't uh, militarize electoral process, we shouldn't have too much of security personnel policing or uh, trying to calm uh, the electoral process because it, it would give an impression that uh, uh, the people uh, could be intimidated by the security personnel. We had 
33,783 uh, personnel, as the IGP did state, and also about 3,500 from sister agencies. And then we had the military personnel uh, at positioned at the state borders. Do you think this is too much of security? Well, this is not just a bad and undue election. Mm -hmm. It's a bad elections in Nigeria. When there are standalone elections like this, there are possibility of oh, police uh, deployment to be very high. You know, in a those states, it was, it was okay. Before, before I used to advocate that we don't need it. You know, it's not necessary in a democratic process. All you just need are mobile police who are not holding arms. You don't need the, 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 the military to be a part of it. But over the time, I have been able to change my perception. Okay. I have been able to change my view because when I see what happened on election day, sometimes you need the military to help you bring sanity. It's not that they will be at the police unit. No, they shouldn't be there. At least from distance from the from the from very volatile area where you know that oh some hoodlums can come and attack. Or at state borders. Yes, when you realize that on election day you have a mobile police officer who is just someone they not have gone. So when people come into the police unit to stand by the part. They are helpless, they can't do anything. Yeah. But when you have this military officer stationed in some strategic area, they will be able to you know, intercept them anywhere. So for now, I think that it is okay, provided they are not being used to truncate democracy, provided they are not being used to sabotage the will of the people. If they conduct their affairs, their affairs in, the, in, in a transparent manner, in a professional manner, if they are more concerned about the democratic process rather than their individual interests, I think I don't have any problem with it. Okay, there's, there's this uh, negative uh, factor that keeps interrupting, interfering into our uh, political space in the electoral process, uh, interfered into uh, Edo politics, also interfered into Undo politics, uh, as allegations have it. Vote by. I actually watched. I actually watched. Find a way around it. I watched one of the video where some of the some young guests were celebrating the fact that oh, they collected money to to vote. You see, we have. I think. I think the the the, the aspect of electoral manipulation is changing. People okay. no longer steal ballot paper. People no longer you know destroy ballot paper. What they now do is to use money to buy to buy votes. But again, I also think that Nigerians are now also getting smarter. Okay. Some of them collect this money and they vote for their choice. You cannot be able to win an election by vote buying if you do not have the connivance of the security agencies and the stakeholders. Because when you collect money, like one of the states where I watched was that when the person who has collected money was voting, he has to show the ballot paper to the police. And the police are notified the party member that oh this person voted for your party. You can give this person uh, uh, the money. So it's not always easy to win an election through vote buying if there is no cooperation of security agencies. Mm, okay. Uh, because you... they always they always know those who are sharing money and they will drive them away from the, 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 the police sector and they will arrest some of them. If you see even on those states, for example, there were ESC officials who were in strategic area trying to arrest those who were uh, sharing money and who were buying votes. Okay. This, this uh, character came into, uh, crept into our uh, electoral process. What reforms are you looking at uh, going forward on how to tackle it? We, we, we have, it's not just a bad vote pain, there are plethora of problems in our electoral system. We have, we, have, we have a recommendation that if that recommendation today is approved, I can sleep in my house knowing very well that any election that is conducted, it will fair and fair. Today, it seems that we have forgotten the waste reports of reforming our electoral process. So the only way to reform our electoral process for us to have a free, fair, transparent election is for us to go back to that report, to appeal to the president, to appeal to the legislature to that these reports, they become part of the electoral act. If they are part of the electoral act, we can be able to post that, oh, in any election that is coming, okay. we can have a free and fair election. Are you talking about the 2010 uh, very electoral well, amendment Very bill? well, very okay. well, very well. It, it, it is a compendium of how to have a credible election in Nigeria. If you look at the steps, some of them that have been, uh, that have been incorporated into our electoral act, they have actually helped us a lot. So if we are able to they approve those recommendations we are but because of the fact that those of them were in power because those of them were in power they are scared that if it is approved it may not They'll be, be disadvantaged their, yes it may not be for their interest for example the appointment of the annexema in that report it was stated that the ngc should be the one that will recommend the 
an ex chairman. Okay. So you understand that the president who is sitting would not want such power to be taken away from him. Okay. Knowing very well that he's very detrimental to uh, other elections. Thank you. In case you're just joining us, it's TMI Tuesday, and I've been having a very, very beautiful uh, discussion with uh, Felix Isere, a legal practitioner, uh, keen into on the uh, governorship race that uh, took place uh, in those states on Saturday last week. And don't forget that uh, I'm your host, Philip Omo Gupo. We're taking a break, and after this break, we're standing for years on the discussion. Stay with me. TMI, every opinion counts. Thank you for staying with me on TMI Tuesday. Uh, while we had a break, we had the opportunity to be joined by uh, an articulate uh, public affairs analyst, and he's no one as but on Nomroba Salvation. Thanks for coming on Nomroba. Uh, good morning, Philip. Good morning, viewers. I, I know you had a hectic time uh, getting through the traffic. Uh, the old of <laughs> Thank God we're here. Thank you very much. Okay, a retrospect uh, to what transpired on Saturday in Ondo State uh, concerning the governorship race. Uh, what is your bite in terms of how the electoral process went? Did it meet your expectation? Yes, yes. I, I think um, uh, the voice of the people is becoming clearer. I think um, I, I'm, if there's anything I'm going to praise the administration of Muhammad Buha, of our president, mm. is that in his administration, the people seem to be heard in, in various ways. So I think um, the people, it, it's becoming clear, we are, we, are, we are having elections now where opponents may not need to go to court anymore. We are beginning to have elections where you are won and it's clear. Mm. There's nothing as in you know that somebody cannot just rig election and be rigging with over 900,000 votes, 90,000 votes over you mm -hmm. and all that. So, Exceeding uh, the number of uh, 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 registrants in the uh, register. And even, even at that, there is an extent to which winning becomes clear okay. that um, w there is a way you can rig. There are things that can be rigged. But there are things that are very clear, you, like if you use the Edo State election, for example, you see the opponent is not going to court. There, has, there is a way you are won, you understand that fine. If a man wants to rig, is he going to rig with over 90,000 votes? There are, there are things, but it's becoming clear. And one of the things that the people are saying, if you hear the voice of people, is sounding like the voice of people are saying that now winning election is becoming a reward for hard work. Okay. The people are trying to tell government that work for us and we reward you with a second tenor. Mm. You don't just come and buy votes. You don't just come and... There may be certain discrepancies, but it was clear. It's clear that um, uh, the people's voice... I, I heard the voice of the people in Ondo State. Even before the election, you could hear the people when you listened to the people. It was clear. We knew where it was dancing to. And there's another thing that we are noticing in our electoral processes. It's, it's, it's happening in those states. It's happening on those states. The people are no longer voting for political parties. The people are voting for individuals. Okay. In the, in the, uh, on those state election, for example, the ZLP getting 50,000 votes on a normal day, no, no, that party will have not gotten that amount of votes. You mean 69,000 votes? Uh, six, or, or whatever. But that party will have not gotten that amount of votes. But because of the person that entered there, it got it. If you come to a do state, you will have known that the people didn't really vote for PDP. Neither did the people vote for APC. The people voted for Godwin or Baseki. So it's now telling every politician. I think when the voice of people is heard like this, politicians have to sit up because they now know that you cannot hide under the umbrella of a party. People look at you. What have you done? What can you offer us? So in the Ondo state election, yes, I think the voice of the people was heard. And I think INEC, to a great extent, I would say the elections conducted this year within this short period of time are better. Although it's not best, but compared to where we are coming from, uh, it's better than where we are coming from. I think we are making progress gradually. And I think if we build on what we are having, uh, within, I think 2023 looks good okay. if we can build on what we're gradually going. Okay. What's your impression about vote buying in the Ondo electoral process? Vote buying is always there. There's always vote buying, but um, the people are becoming more enlightened. You know, like what happened in Ondo State is happening in Ondo State. Vote buying, you spend your money, but the people still vote their conscience. You can never stop vote buying, but you see the people, you give me money, I take your money, 
and I still vote who I want to vote for because you don't follow me to the boots. You pay me outside there, I come and tell you I voted for your person. So we cannot stop vote buying completely. People will always want to do that. But what the people are doing, trust me, Philip, in the next two elections that were coming, politicians will understand that it's a waste of money to give to the people. Because these people, they will eat your money, they will vote their conscience. So the only set of persons that can really control vote buying, uh, the security agents are there, they are trying their best. Then the people are the ones that, we are the ones controlling vote buying now. We are the ones telling the persons, I will eat your money, I will still vote my conscience. And I want to encourage our people, please don't reject any money given to you on election day. It's your money that was stolen before. Uh, well, uh, eat, uh, eat, and vote your conscience. Uh, in, as much, in as much as uh, you wouldn't be uh, found wanting for taking money that is not yours, because uh, I don't think we should encourage that on this platform. <laughs> okay. uh, I, think, I think the best thing to do is not to be involved in it, uh, because uh, you who, who, who takes that money, you are also as guilty as the one that gives. I think uh, we have a custodian of the law here but that the can stretch it the on bribery and corruption. That's exactly the what it is. is basically, it's is on issue of morality, okay. not on issue of legality. If you don't collect that money, the person whom the money has been given will take it to his house and keep the money to himself. So why don't you benefit from it? Then follow your conscience. <laughs> yes. Because the money was given to the person to share to members of the police unit as a way of appreciating them for coming out. OK, OK. Let's look at this. Let's stretch this conversation. Now, we have issues where even uh, there, there are indices, uh, there are reports uh, which states that uh, Nigeria is even being the poverty of uh, the headquarters of poverty. Now, unemployment rate is increasing every day. And uh, some persons who always believe that uh, the government is instituted upon to solve all of these issues, myriad issues about unemployment, economic hardship. Uh, we still find ourselves in the same vicious circle. Now, now, now do you think in this case, our democracy is helping us to uh, reduce poverty? I think, first, before I answer, I need to quickly just respond to a point he raised. Okay. He raised the point that people are now voting for individuals and no longer political parties. Do I may agree with him to an extent, but I don't think he's completely correct. Because, for example, if you if a sense, no matter how good you are, if you contest under an APC in the start is today, because the sentiment they already have against that party, they will vote against you. If you go to the southwest, for example, now, if you are an APC person, you have an opportunity of winning an election that being the PDP. So we still have this sentiment of party sentiment. Those, the, the ideological uh, the differences, some people think that this party is for this, interest of this zone, this party of, for interest of, uh, of this zone. So to some extent, individual candidacy have a lot to play. But again, the political party, if they would do election, for example, now, if the governor had contested under a Labour Party, he would have won. So parties still have a role to play. Parties that have structure. Okay. Have you said that? Okay. To answer your question, I think when there is confidence in the electoral system, when there is confidence in the electoral system, people tend to believe that, oh, if I vote for this person to, if I vote for this person, the vote will count. So when you look at the performance of governments, it has a lot to do with the type of election they, they, they conducted. If I spend large amount of money in winning an election, in buying votes, if I become a governor, I will not want to perform because I can say that, oh, I won this election by the money. But if the people come out to vote for me, I have a duty to ensure that, oh, I didn't, I didn't betray the trust they have bestowed on me. So the electoral system has a way to affect governance of any state or nation. OK, but you also agree that the uh, attitude of some politicians uh, could be the reason why governance is not really keen into uh, uh, reducing poverty and the unemployment rate in Nigeria. Do you agree? There's no government that doesn't have an interest to, to solve this challenge. There's no government that will say, I don't want to do this. There's difference between interest and willpower. Okay. There may be interest, but the capacity to perform. I think, the, I think the value system of the people and the political party have a lot to play. You may have the interest, you may have the willpower, but the system may not appreciate and may know. Mm. When you go to the homes of most of the politicians today, you realize that the people that come around there are people that are interested in what they are going to get what they are going to get. They are not interested in what can this man do for the general population, the general electorate. So the interest of the, of the party 
the interest of the people, what they value, what they appreciate. Many of them appreciate what they can get from a governor immediately. Know what the governor can do for the general electorate. So not until we as a people, we as members of a political party, we that believe to a political party system, we begin to build a very good progressive value system that tend to channel attention, that tend to channel interest to the overall well-being of the people. Okay. That are individual interest. We cannot achieve any better thing. Okay, I remember uh, looking at the issue of uh, unemployment rate. Uh, well, uh, as a little way of digressing. Now, do you see our democracy as helping out in this, or should we seek other ways? Um, I, I want to categorically say that the government, our unemployment rate will steadily rise if we continue the way we've been. It's not by accident that many people are unemployed. Our educational system, we need to, every government that wants to solve unemployment must go to the root cause of unemployment. And the root cause of unemployment in this country is our educational system. Our educational system is created to solve problems that no longer exist. Mm. We, we are solving problems that no longer exist. We are producing engineers we no longer need. We are producing people that we no longer need. There, you see, when you go to the foundation of our unemployment, it started from, there was an oil boom in this country, and there was a time we were building, ref the refineries were coming, we needed engineers to work in the refineries, we needed, or the, the, the industries were coming up. But what failed in our educational system, so we created an educational system to meet that need at that time. Okay. Over 30 years ago, that need has been met. The industries now have the engineers. <laughs> the, 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 the people that need to be employed. Now, we still have an education. If you watch out, when a graduate comes out of our system, he's handicapped until he's employed somewhere. Because the educational system produces you so that you must work in an industry that doesn't exist anymore. For example, imagine your NYSC is producing badge A, badge B, badge C, stream 1, stream 2, every year for graduates to work where? The ones that are on ground have not been employed, and you are adding to them badge A, badge B. This year, now over one million people are going to take jam. Univen is going to take thousands. Uh, uh, college of we need to go back. Every uh, every government that is serious, we need to go back to our educational system. We are producing the amount of engineers we are producing now. They are not needed. They are too much. The amount of the people, they are too much. That's why if you put a vacancy for a work and for work here now, you say you want to pay people two hundred. Recently, the government wanted to employ seven hundred thousand people all over Nigeria just for three months. Uh, they are paying about back twenty some. Thousand people, somebody, well, with PhD, somebody with PhD applied, people with masters applied. Why? Because this certificate is no longer so. We need to go back to our system. What we, what I suggest for government is this we need educational system that teach people current problems, let people go to school and learn how to repair foam, let them come out as graduates, let people go to school and come out as let's recent problem the problems that our educational system is solving they are no longer existing and this should be captured in manifestos of political it, it, parties so we should, let's see what they want to bring on board so in order so in to the, change so, the narrative so in the democracy that we're talking about the new government are like our government basically the ones they are credible the people that are willing they should come up we need new ideas that bring up the people what we need now is a graduate that is coming out if he doesn't get a job, he should be dependent. Our education, we need to go back to our curriculum. You can't use what you used to teach, what you used to graduate, what you used to teach people 40 years ago. You are still teaching them now. The world has left it. So the party structure, the, the uh, government structure, we should go back. Okay. I think so. It's not just crying for employment, employment. No, 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 no. It's providing the environment, providing the educational system that brings out the right result. I think that's okay. what we can about, about What do you think about political corruption, <laughs> Felix Isere? Uh, do, 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 you, do you see political corruption as another issue that challenges uh, government to perform optimally? We, 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 we already know as Nigerians that the greatest bin of our development is corruption. Okay. We don't need to over this. We don't need to over this for us to be able to articulate a point. Okay. It is very simple. If we are able to solve the problem of corruption in our political system, it's not just a political type of corruption. Economic corruption. There are different levels of corruption. You know, one thing I appreciate about Nigerians is that when they have the collective way to agitate for something, they get it. The NSAS protest that is currently on 
has further proven that Nigerians are strong, they are bold, and they can be united to have and achieve their aim. I have always said that we have been protesting against NSAS. Why can't we also lead a protest against and corruption in Nigeria? Let us do this because when we do this, a peaceful protest. Yes, peaceful protest. If we're able to solve the problem of corruption, which is our greatest problem, this NSAS today is a product of the corruption that they are having. The SARS today we are having, the reason why many persons are against them is because there is an allegation of corruption. So if we are able to solve the issue of corruption, I think that we are able to solve the 50% problem of Nigeria. Okay, but a, a lot of uh, kudos, uh, comments, uh, laudable remarks have been made on the uh, presidency over his uh, ability not to interfere in the electoral process and how he uh, gave uh, kudos to whichever party that wins election. Do you think that's a starting point? You know, I like, you know why I like politicians? They are very dynamic set of people. They know how to... The same people who, 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 who lambasted the president in the case of Osho election, in the case of Kano election, in the state of Kogi election, were the same people who celebrated the president in the case of Edu election because he favored them. The same people who, who said that APC needs to congratulate the candidate of the PDP and those say because the election will show up there that the person is a bitter loser, that the person is a vegetative loser, that the person does not is a greedy person, is desperate. Well the same person yesterday who released a press statement saying that the uh, uh, PDP and Angudo said cannot congratulate the governor. So I don't think that the, the, the issue of the president being in support of being in support of that is not when they win they believe that there's democracy. When they don't win, they believe that there's no democracy. That is the issue of our party system. So it's not until we now have confidence in the electoral system that we believe that you don't need the support of the president to win an election. You don't need the support of any godfather or of any stakeholder to win an election. You need the support of the people to win an election. Okay, could you, you cannot take away this could you say? Of could you say the uh, Edo and Ondo election mimics what you just said? Yes, very well. Okay. For example, I've already given an, an, an analogy. Okay. In the case of Edo, when, a, when PDP won, they expected the, the APC to congratulate. Yeah, and you, when the you APC said that, you said that. You said that. You yes. said that. I'm, I'm just uh, in the aspect of uh, the people taking ownership and uh, without undue influence from the federal government to interfere into the electoral process. Did you see that play out like uh, you did? Uh, uh, I, I saw that more around um, Edo State. Okay. The reason why it's proven, it proved itself more around Edo State because the, the party that won was not the party of the president. And we know that the police that came here and all that, the presidency had all the possibility. Like I said, I praise, I, you know, we need to commend our president. That was for, courageous. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. That he, he was even able to accept uh, the, the, opposi the opposition party, that is a PDP, the governor even went to greet him in the office and all that, and it, it was a lot of sportsmanship from him. So uh, for me, I don't read Nigeria from the statement of politicians. I read Nigeria from the statement of Nigerians. A politician always speaks because of personal interest. When whatever I have learned that whatever a politician is doing, there is personal interest attached to it. But I listen to the people. And when you hear the people, the people are grateful to Muhammad Buhari for what happened in a those state. And even on those state, forget about it whether uh, you, you must not win every time. So of course he had the the truth is this. I believe if you read the political terrain, the only reason why PDP won in a those state is because the sitting governor moved to PDP. If it was in if it was in APC, I believe he would have because his supporters followed him from PDP, from APC to PDP. So uh, if we look at that, I think for him to win here, that shows that the presidency was really, really neutral. If you notice everything, the beating and all that, and him even so... If okay, you, that was why you said the election wasn't really about political parties, but no, about No, no, it was, it was about it was the individual. Okay. Like what he said, uh, we still know that a political party still have it. A political party must have a structure, of and, course. And, and that's the to, platform to, to at which uh, uh, yes, uh, you but, have uh, candidates but, springing up. Of course, it has not, but when you see signs of success, it's coming up. It's not really all over the country, but it's proving gradually okay. that if you, 
if you are able to convince the people and you have the right platform, no matter what the plan, there are many political parties that cannot win election. Okay. Not because the people hate them, but because you know you have to have structures, Structure. you have to have party men, you have to have what it takes. So as at now, I think the, the major parties that have such structures to win those elections are the APC, the PDP, and probably maybe Abga and a little of other parties. So okay, thank you. The other parties, if they want to be able to have a new name. A good man win election, they should build structures. Thank you. It's, not it, the it's, it's been uh, conducting credible election and uh, the uh, Ondo experience, but uh, in as much as we spoke about the Ondo state experience, uh, there was this uh, resemblance uh, of uh, the electoral process that transpired again in Edo state hands. Uh, we also featured uh, in some of the discussion Edo election. <laughs>